Hello and welcome to the first and possibly last episode of Ask Doz. And in this occasional series, I will attempt to answer some of your questions. And the first question uh, this week comes from user uh, Lawson Studio, who asks, I'd like to know how to test a Zener. Now, a Zener diode uh, is a, a very specific kind of diode, and it's sort of got a bit of a fault. And uh, that has been harnessed, and we can uh, use these um, to make various different devices uh, voltage reference for example voltage regulator and stabilizer that sort of thing it is a sort of crude voltage reference but yeah how do we test it so if i uh, select my multimeter here and um, we just turn that round to the ordinary diode test position uh, we can see that's working sanity check that if we connect it normally so it tests pretty much the same as an ordinary diode so that is um, forward biased and we're seeing 0.68 of a volt if we reverse bias it which is how it is sort of used in the zener circuit you can see it reads open so it reads like an ordinary diode an ordinary diode it is not um, they come in various different sizes and different voltages. So in the reversed bias mode, what happens is, as um, we supply a potential difference across the diode, it will clamp it, it will start conducting when it gets to its rated voltage. Um, methods of failure, these sort of medium sized and bigger ones, generally fail short circuits. So you would be able to see that on an ordinary multimeter because obviously if it's gone short you're going to read nothing um, or a short circuit so a beep in the case of this meter um, smaller ones can go short or they can go open bigger ones can go open as well depends how much abuse they suffer when they fail but um, so if you've got one that's reading open or short with an ordinary meter it is faulty however doesn't tell you whether something screwy is going on in there and its voltage is no longer any good. Now you can buy um, Zener testers. Um, Peak, uh, people that make the little lozenge, lozenge shaped uh, instruments that I use, they do a Zener tester, also tests LEDs. Um, so yeah, you can, you can use one of those. About 50 quid I think, which is probably not bad money really, but um, I'm going to show you a way you can do it with just a lab power supply. So I've got this uh, particularly uh, unpleasant lab power supply here. Um, let me just move that camera slightly so you can see the, the display on there. It's currently set to maximum voltage. I've got a spare crock lead here and I've got a 4.7 K resistor. So to measure this Zener and see if it is Zenering. Um, what we need to do is we need to set a positive output from our power supply, clip it on one end of our 4.7k resistor there, clip the other end of that onto the end of the diode with the band on it. So you can see the diode there, this end's got the band, so that's going to go on there. Uh, this end is going to go back to the negative side of our power supply. Uh, now we need to field in our multimeter. So we'll put some crop clips on there and we're going to measure straight across this Zener diode. Uh, I have no idea what this Zener rated is rated for, but we're about to find out. So uh, there's our voltage. If we switch the power supply on, there we go, we've got 31 volts coming into the power supply, but we've got 14.98, 14.99 there, 15, it is rising slightly, I'm just gonna switch that off. So that is a 15 volt Zener. Um, they do vary a little bit with temperature and how much current you pass through them, but that's a pretty, pretty quick and easy test you can do there. 
Um, so that's that one. Let's just do another one. I've got a smaller one here. Uh, no idea what this this is. You can also creep up on the voltage, which I may attempt to do. This power supply is not ideal for that. I dislike this power supply immensely. Uh, there we go. Half a volt. No. What's gone on there? There we go. Loose connection somewhere. Uh, 5.1 volts. So that is a 5 volt Zener. So there we go. Let's just do a third one. Obviously, the voltage we can test up to is limited by um, by our power supply there. So um, yeah, let's uh, just test another one. See what we get. I know I have got some quite high voltage diodes in there. So uh, obviously if it's more than 30, 30 something volts, we're not going to, well, all we're going to see is 30 volts, but uh, let's switch on there. There we go. Yeah, this one is bigger than our 30 volts because the meter is reading at least that. Let's just try and find a different one, shall we? I'm just plonking through my packet of diodes here. I don't know what I've got. Oh, there's some slightly different style you'll see with a with a blue case on it there oh and there we go power supply is already on 7.6 volts so I wonder what that actually is. But you can see it is Zenering. Rated to 7.5 volts. So near enough in the door ballpark that you can see whether that Zener is in fact Zenering. Um, so yeah, quick and quick and dirty test. Occasionally you will find that a Zener goes noisy. And um, yeah, best thing to do there is by substitution. So uh, that's easy. Let's move on to the next question. So the next question comes from longtime supporter of the channel, Ian Huckstep, and uh, he writes, uh, have you a video on how to set up the oscilloscope to ring test the transformer coil? This is with re regards to the um, line output transformer video that we did on the dreaded Pi. So, um, yeah, let's set that up and I'll talk you through it. Right how to test a line output transformer. I have here a known good and working line output transformer. This is a FAT 063-03. And I think they were made by Koenig. Can't remember, but it's an aftermarket replacement. Um, and I've got a sneaking suspicion this was from an ITT uh, transistorized set, but it is new old stock. And um, yeah. So there we go. So uh, we want to prove our transformer is good. Um, I'm just going to dim the lights so we reduce the glare on the oscilloscope screen slightly. So there you go. So you can see the oscilloscope here and you'll notice this pin on my scope here is called probe compensation. And it says about five volts, one kilohertz square wave. So if I connect my scope probe there, we can see we get a nice square wave. And the purpose of that is to uh, compensate if you're using a divide by 10 probe or divide by 100 probe, you can adjust the probe to get these edges square. That's not what we're gonna be using it for. So, um, right, I need to just clip on with a bit of lead to the probe compensation pin there. So I've got this yellow crop clip lead. I'm just going to clip onto there. So that is now going to put my um, five volt square wave on the end of my probe. There it is. So the other, so the end of my probe that uh, now has the signal on it, the pointy bit here, I am just going to connect 
to our output to the transformer. This is the high voltage output. Um, on this set, uh, I believe this would have fed a tripler. It was a color set. I might be wrong, but that is your EHT output. Now, if you've got a set that's fitted with um, a split diode transformer, i.e. inbuilt rectification, one with a stick rectifier, uh, you can't do this test, I don't think. So, sadly, you need to just have a bare transformer. So everything must be removed. So I'll just clip that on... Mm, yeah, clip that on there. Get this right. So that is our output to our oscilloscope. There we go. So the other end of the probe needs to clip on to the pin that either feeds the top cap if it's a valve set from our line output valve or the line output transistor itself. And if we just clip on there, there you go. You can see our square wave is no longer square. It's overshooting up here and then it rings. So our square wave is hitting the winding and the winding is going into resonance, which is decaying. And then the square wave goes back the other way. And again, it overshoots, rings, goes back and repeats. That is a good transformer. If you get a short circuit turn, which I shall emulate with this crocodile clip here, you'll see that ring will diminish slightly. Uh, it won't be much, but there we go. You can see it's diminished. And it's not a lot. But if you can see, that ring is almost extending all the way to the end of our one kilohertz. And when you short it out it diminishes slightly. Now if you get more than one turn short circuit and I'm going to use this heater winding on here. Um, so there's one, two, three, four turns on there. If I just short that out watch what happens. So there we go and you can see it absolutely kills that ringing almost dead and that is a bad transformer and that was what we were seeing on our pi transformer of course but there you go simple test there's no need to hook up any earths or anything all you do is output from the square wave calibrator to the top cap connection on your transformer and then the output from the eht winding of the transformer back to your oscilloscope probe there you go. Uh, there was a third question raised by a user on Facebook. I'm unable to find the comment. Sadly, it may have been deleted, but it did say, how long does it take you to write a script? I'm not quite sure if you're serious. Uh, I've never written a script. It's all ad-libbed, making it up as I go along. It's just, you know, you and me looking at a piece of kit and working out what's going on with it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that rubbish. Uh, and I will see you on the weekend with a full-length episode. Cheers now. Bye.